Hi guys, my name's Ben Taylor and welcome to today's video. In today's video, we're gonna be doing a side-by-side -side comparison of the Canon EOS RP and the Canon EOS R. Let's roll that intro. <laughs> If you enjoy camera news, reviews and how-tos, then make sure you hit the subscribe button and then the notification bell. This means that YouTube will send you the good stuff. Okay, in today's video, we're gonna be taking a comparison look at the EOS RP and the EOS R. Both the EOS RP and the EOS R are full-frame mirrorless cameras brought to us by Canon. Let's start with the size of both these cameras. The EOS RP is slightly smaller than the EOS R, but it's very marginal. And the EOS RP also weighs less than the EOS R. I think it weighs around about a pound as the comparison to the EOS R, which is the pound and a half. So really you're not gonna be able to tell much difference between the weight when it's in your hand. If we take a look at the outside of the body, we can see that the Canon EOS R has a touch bar right here. This enables you to switch between different menus when you're looking through the viewfinder. It also has a LCD display on top of the camera. Now both these features are not found in the EOS RP and Canon have decided to go for the regular dial which you can see right here. Both Canon cameras come with LCD fully articulated touchscreen displays. Now this is great and I think most cameras should have these and I'm still surprised that most manufacturers don't add them into their lineups. Now the Canon EOS R has slightly more screen real estate at 3.2 inches, whereas the EOS RP is slightly smaller at three inches. Now of course I don't think this is really gonna make much difference for anyone. I think that 0.2 of an inch is really marginal. If we carry on with the outside and the external of the body, both cameras only have a single card slot. Now Canon have resisted going over to the dual card slot, which is quite surprising and I still don't know why Canon are doing this. Maybe it's just cutting back on costs or technology or room, who knows? But they have not yet transferred over to the dual card slot for the mirrorless models. Both cameras of course come with Wi-Fi connectability and also Bluetooth. They have a HDMI and USB connection as well for both cameras, which of course is really handy. Both the EOS RP and the EOS R come with a full frame CMOS sensor, which is almost identical. There's hardly any difference between the two, with the EOS R having a very slight size advantage. Both cameras also have the Digit 8 chipset, which is used for most of Canon's 4K cameras. Now, I think this is because they are able to run 4K more smoothly on the Digit 8 chipset. One of the bigger differences of the two cameras is that the Canon EOS RP is a 26.2 megapixel camera whereas the Canon EOS R actually is 30.3 megapixels. So it's gonna have a higher resolution and because of this, a better quality photo. Let's talk about frame rates. The Canon EOS RP shoots at a very disappointing five frames per second. Not quite sure why Canon have kept this so low, but they have. Now, this is really not gonna be ideal for anybody which is thinking about this from a sports photography perspective. The Canon EOS R, on the other hand, shoots at eight frames per second, which is better, but still quite low for its class, if you compare it against the Nikon and the Sony. Let's move on to the video aspects of the camera, shall we? Now, I know a lot of people were excited about this, especially when the EOS R was first launched, and then also the EOS RP. Now, unfortunately, most people were left deflated by what was on offer. Now, both cameras do shoot 4K, which is great news, but they have a crop attached. Now, also you have the 4K on the EOS RP, which is 24 frames per second, and that's it. With the EOS R, you have 24 frames per second and 30 frames per second. So nothing earth shattering, really. If we move on to 1080p, this is where it gets even more dire, let's say, for the EOS RP. Because strangely, and most bizarrely, 
they have not included 24 frames per second in 1080p, which is really strange because this is a cinematic frame rate and this is pretty much where every video creator or YouTuber looks for in their camera. Plus it's standard, it's not something which is extra and cameras which are way below this price point also have it on. I must say though I do think that Canon are going to have a firmware update which is going to correct this and this means that they will have 24 frames per second in the future. That of course hasn't been confirmed so we're going to have to wait to see. If we move over to the EOS R though, it starts to get a little bit better because the EOS R has 24 frames per second, 30, 60 and 120 frames per second. This means you can get that beautiful slow motion footage which I know a lot of you video creators love. Now both cameras of course come equipped with Canon's dual pixel autofocus which is probably the best or definitely one of the best on the market. It's quick, it's reliable and you know that you can feel comfortable in the knowledge that it's always going to hit focus for you. Now a really exciting bit of news is that the EOS RP also added eye autofocus into this. They did this in our survey mode as well and you can switch between this on the back of the screen by switching between the autofocus points. Now one really surprising thing is that the Canon EOS R doesn't have this uh, eye autofocus included. I'm sure this will get added on at some point, potentially. I can't say that that's definitely going to happen. Um, but you'd probably be a little bit cheesed off if you'd bought the EOS R back in October when it first came out. And then you've got this cheaper full frame camera which has this better autofocus mode. But we'll have to see what Canon does with this. Now mirrorless cameras are yet to have the battery life um, to match that of DSLRs and this is no exception with the EOS RP and the EOS R. So the EOS RP has a max shot of 270 which is only achieved when it's in eco mode. It ranges between 240 to 250 in standard mode. If you look at the EOS R it's better but not groundbreaking. You have 450 shots achieved in its power saving mode and then you have 370 which is in its standard mode. Okay guys so let's address the most asked question shall we? What's the price? The Canon EOS comes in at $1,299 compared with the EOS R which is $2,299. That's a thousand dollars difference in price which is substantial for most people. Now is there that kind of difference in the specs? Honestly I don't think there is. Now I think the Canon EOS RP is a good starting camera if someone's looking to get in to the full frame market. Now of course there's a few kinks, you haven't got the 24 frames per second in 1080p which is odd but I will say that I think this is going to be corrected with a firmware update in future. But you know, with just these few small things, you do have access to all of Canon's amazing uh, range of EF and RF lenses which they've brought out. So this is a great way to get into the full frame market without spending too much money. Of course, if you want to spend extra, a thousand dollars extra and get the Canon EOS R, you're getting a very good camera, but some people will say it still doesn't match that of the Nikon and the Sony. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed today's video and most importantly, I hope that this comparison has aided you in making a decision for which camera you will most likely go for. Please leave your comments in the section below. Just leave me the name of the camera which you're backing and which you're voting for and then we can all see which one is most popular. If this is your first time on my channel, then please hit subscribe and hit the notification bell. This just means you can sit back and relax and let YouTube send you the good stuff. I hope you've enjoyed the video guys and whatever you do, have an amazing day and I'll see you in the next video.